After a building security system malfunctions, a group of people get stuck inside with a bloodthirsty guest. Jake is working at Storage 24 when the building suddenly shakes aggressively. His workmates Greg and Sarah are alarmed by what happened, so they check in on him. Jake thinks it was an earthquake, but when Sarah looks out the window, they discover that there's been a plane crash. Greg finds that the plane's engine has crushed his car, so he goes outside to inspect it further. However, while he's out, the building goes an automated lockdown. Meanwhile, a woman walks her dog and happens to pass by the crash site. While she's on her phone, her dog senses something from the other side of an open fence. It runs away, so she follows it deeper into the crash site, where she finds the damaged cargo units covered in a white substance. Her dog barks at something in the dark and charges right at it. The woman then panics when she hears a slashing sound fearing that her dog might have been killed and she might be next. Elsewhere, Charlie and Mark are stuck in traffic because of the crash. Charlie then starts talking about his recent breakup, and although Mark is fed up with the topic, he reassures his friend that he's better off single for a while. Just then, Mark hears from the radio that a military cargo plane crashed in London, and it's thought to have been shot down. Mark wants to focus on the news, but Charlie keeps yapping about his ex. That night, Jake and Sarah ask for assistance in opening the shutters, but to no avail. Charlie and Mark arrive in the area to get the former stuff from storage, but find that they can't get inside. Just then, Bob, the maintenance engineer, figures it out and fixes the security system. Sarah then walks out angrily, much to Jake's relief. Meanwhile, Charlie and Mark enter the building, and Bob does too. However, when Bob gets inside, he locks the shutters again. But he reassures Jake that he'll head to the basement to reroute the alarm to the emergency power system. When he gets there, he discovers that the machines have been destroyed, and there are also trails of white substances. Just then, he hears a noise in the distance, so he checks it out. Elsewhere, Charlie heads to a storage room that he shares with his ex Shelly, who's also there to fetch her things. Shelly's friend Chris and his girlfriend Nikki happen to be there too, and they awkwardly sit through the former couple's argument. Suddenly, the power dies down, so Jake heads to the basement only to find Bob's chest ripped open. He then sees a glimpse of an alien-like creature, so he immediately runs. He closes the door behind him, but the creature forcefully bangs on it, so Jake races away. Meanwhile, Charlie urges everyone to go home because there's no electricity. Shelly decides to stay to sort out their things because she wants him out of her life as soon as possible. With this, Charlie and Mark leave, and the electricity returns shortly after. On the other hand, Shelly is left alone in the room after Chris and Nikki grab something to eat. Later, Charlie and Mark reach the reception area, but they don't find Jake there. They get alarmed when they discover the destroyed door leading to the basement, so they try calling for help over the phone, but there's no signal. Elsewhere, Chris buys food from a vending machine and waits for Nikki as she uses the comfort room. Inside, she notices a shadow pass by her cubicle, making her nervous as there's supposed to be no one else there. Unbeknownst to her, the ceiling is destroyed, and there are trails left by the creature. Meanwhile, Chris hears someone scream in the distance, so he briefly leaves Nikki to check it out. He follows the sound to a storage unit filled with mannequins, where he finds Jake who warns him that they have to leave or they'll get killed. Before he can explain, they hear clattering and creaking noises, and Jake starts to cry in fear. Suddenly, a clawed hand grabs his face and pulls him into the ceiling. Soon, Charlie and Mark return to Shelly, explaining that they're stuck because of the shutters. Once again, Charlie asks for closure from her, angering her, so she reveals that she doesn't love him anymore. She then walks out, and before Charlie can follow her, Mark tells him to stay while he calms Shelly down. However, it turns out that Mark and Shelly are having an affair, and they secretly make out in the storage room next to where Charlie is. Meanwhile, Nikki returns to the room and asks Charlie where everyone is. Just then, they hear a loud screech, so Charlie immediately looks for Mark. His friend also heard the same thing, so he heads out of the storage room with Shelly following him. When Charlie witnesses this, he quickly realizes his best friend's betrayal, so he attacks him until the women stop him. He interrogates Shelly about their relationship, and she implies that they've been seeing each other for quite some time. 
Hurt, Charlie walks out, and Mark tells Shelly to leave him be. Nikki is also disappointed in her friend, so she accompanies Charlie. Together, they try to look for Jake so they can leave. They later find themselves in the room with the mannequins, where Chris is frozen in shock with blood on his face. They attempt to snap him out of it when blood starts dripping from the ceiling, so Charlie checks it but finds nothing. Just then, Jake appears out of nowhere, panting with his face torn into shreds. The creature then pulls Jake into the dark, leaving Charlie and the others horrified. Meanwhile, Shelly and Mark spot Nikki trying to catch her breath outside. They go inside to check on the others, and Charlie tells them about Jake. Chris finally speaks, but he only says that they're all going to die. Just then, an old man named David holds Nikki hostage, accusing them of spying on him. Luckily, Shelly knocks him out. They then tie him up, thinking that he killed Jake. However, David keeps rambling about his ex-wife, whom he thinks is the one who sent them. He gets confused about the murder accusations and denies all of them. This then leaves the group puzzled about who killed Jake. Just then, they hear something clanging outside, and Chris panics, saying that it'll come for them. Charlie then tells Nikki to close the door, so she does. Suddenly, everything falls quiet, and they assume that they're safe. However, the creature starts banging on the door, and it suddenly swings it open. Before the creature can get in, Chris rushes out to save himself. However, the monster chases and catches him, ripping out his heart. Meanwhile, David tells everyone that his unit is their best option because it locks from the inside. They head there but struggle to get in when he can't find his keys. Just then, they start hearing the creature approaching, so they pressure David to work faster. Before the creature can get them, they enter just in time. With everyone shocked about the creature, David speculates that it came from the plane. He claims that he's been following the news all afternoon and learned that the plane wasn't carrying normal cargo. Whatever that plane carried was a threat, hence why the military put half of London under lockdown. Realizing that they need to get out before the creature can kill them, Charlie remembers that Bob had a device that could open the shutters. David adds that all the power systems and wirings are in the basement, so they might find Bob there. However, to do this, they must venture out again. So David asserts that they must first find weapons in the other units. With this, Charlie and Mark use the ventilation shafts to get into the other units. As they crawl through the narrow path, Mark tries explaining his affair with Shelly. However, Charlie doesn't want to hear it, and he'd rather just focus on getting out alive. After a while, they finally reach their first unit and quickly get to work. As they explore multiple units, they gather weapons and other supplies, such as walkie-talkies and fireworks. However, as they make their way back, the creature starts banging on the shafts. The two quickly crawl to escape, but they're met with a dead end. There's no other way but to head up, but before Charlie can escape, the creature tears the shaft in front of him open. He pleads with Mark for help, but the man leaves him to fend for himself. He then returns to David's unit and locks the air vents after him, claiming that he tried saving Charlie but there's nothing he could do. He then hysterically gives everyone the weapons and asserts that they must leave. Elsewhere, Charlie exits through a separate air vent, revealing that he survived the attack. He then finds a machine gun in the unit, only to realize that it's a toy. He tries searching for more weapons, but the unit is just filled with more toys. He then busts the unit's lock open, but as soon as he steps outside, the creature kicks him back in. Luckily, a robot dog powers on and distracts the monster, giving Charlie enough time to escape. As he does, he runs into the others. Although they're puzzled that he's still alive, they hear the creature nearby, so they continue escaping. However, they end up bumping into the creature, so David tells them to go without him. Charlie wants to help, but David instructs him not to lose sight of the others. With this, David bravely faces the creature, but he barely lasts a minute before his skull gets smashed. Later, the group reaches the basement, but they're scared to go down. Charlie takes the lead and splits the group into two. He explores the other side of the basement with Nikki while Mark goes with Shelly. Not long after, Charlie spots Bob with half of his body missing. He then informs the others through the walkie-talkie that they found him, so they should head back up to the reception area. However, before he can grab the device, Bob reaches out to Charlie. This scares him, so he quickly grabs the device and leaves. When Charlie and Nikki get upstairs, Shelly is nowhere to be found. 
Mark says the creature took her, and they can't do anything about it. Suspicious, Charlie attempts to look for her, but Mark stops him, claiming that they need to escape and save themselves. However, this only earns him a punch in the face. He then sums up their friendship as a diss to Mark, saying that he always needed him to feel better about himself. He can't even get his own girlfriend, so he had to take his. With this, Charlie looks for Shelly. Elsewhere, the creature chokes Shelly, but she stabs it, allowing her to escape. It chases her down the aisle, but she manages to hide in a nearby lift. She immediately calls Charlie through the walkie-talkie and tells him where she is. Meanwhile, Nikki follows Charlie with the fireworks. The creature is about to break down the door to the lift, so Shelly desperately tries to escape through the shafts. Before it can get her, the creature hears a yapping sound. It turns out to be a toy dog, which is now walking towards it with fireworks strapped to it. Not long after, it explodes in the creature's face. After the explosion, Charlie looks for Shelly, and he's beyond happy that she's alive. Shelly, on the other hand, is surprised that he saved her. After this, they leave with Nikki to join Mark upstairs, not knowing that the creature is still alive. However, when they get upstairs, Mark refuses to open the door after he catches a glimpse of the creature behind them. After multiple attempts, Charlie breaks the door down, and when they get inside, he tells the ladies to help him barricade it. He immediately takes the device and tries cracking the code while Shelly slaps Mark. Finally, Charlie figures out the code and announces that they're finally getting out. However, the creature smashes through the door and grabs Mark, eating his face right before everyone. Charlie tries saving him, but he's no match for the creature's strength. Nikki helps him by spraying the creature with a fire extinguisher. Charlie then returns to finish the creature, but it only flicks him away. As the creature corners him, Shelly tosses a crowbar to Charlie, allowing him to stab the monster. Finally, the creature collapses. By the time the three get out of the building, it's already morning. They go on their way home. And before Charlie leaves, Shelly apologizes for everything. She also offers him a ride, but he refuses. Suddenly, Charlie notices a shadow hovering above him, and to his surprise, it's an alien spaceship. It flies towards the city, which is engulfed in flames and utter chaos as the battle had also been happening outside Storage 24. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.